Data Robot just launched Sifter. I wonder what that is. Hey kid, I can help with that. So I was reading a press release about Sifter and I wanted to know what is it really? Tell my audience a little bit more about that and why did your team decide to build this? One of the big advantages of being in a company like Data Robot is I get to see customer problems, especially in Gen AI upfront, right? As you know, there's a lot of hype in Gen AI, everybody is talking about agents and models and everything in between from coding agents, et cetera. And, but what really works, right? And what is the barrier to going from quickly prototyping? And today in AI, you can very quickly go and prototype like lots of mature open source tooling to going all the way into production, right? And we, as our CEO calls it, it's a confidence gap. It's very easy to prototype. It's very difficult to take, go from prototype to production. So we saw all these pervasive problems throughout all our customers, right? They were all struggling with whenever they had their own unique data set and they want to build a chat bot or a rag bot on top of that, they would all come and struggle with, oh, I heard today that Quen 3 release, should I use Quen 3? or yes, last week GPT 4.1 came out. Should I use that? What should be my embedding model? My uncle told me that this agentic flow is it, right? We should so all go and implement it. And so then this becomes this folk knowledge, vibes, everybody like in the community sharing tips and tricks and people then going and trying these things by hand. And then that we found is has become one of this very annoying problem because you just simply don't know what works. So you are just trying things by hand, many different things, and it's tedious, it's manual, it's laborious. So we decided like, how about making a tool? Like this is very good. Computers are fantastic at doing search, right? Like searching through high dimensional search spaces over the space of pipelines of AI pipelines is something the community actually knows how to do in computer science. So let's leverage all that and data rewards auto ML DNA. Let's bring it to the forefront. And we want to provide this collaborative tool that people can then use to automatically find optimal flows in okay. latency, accuracy, cost, and iterate on that. And you've also decided to open source this framework. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So when we were doing this, we, we, obviously as a startup, our first instinct was like, let's hold it close to our chest. Let's put it out only in the product and the platform. But then we decided that it will be far more valuable, both for data robot, as well as for the AI community, if we were to put it out there in the front and mm -hmm. center so that we can build trust, build mind share, and then the whole world can derive insights from Sifter. And that's really, and the more people who use Sifter, data robot wins as well. Yeah, that's true. I completely agree with that approach. And I think the community will appreciate that as well, that you decided to open source. And I was reading about your interesting model evaluation angle. So can you tell us more about that? I'm sure you have, everybody has heard of the LMSYS chatbot arena, right? And are like many other evaluation frameworks that are there. And model evaluation is one of the most critical research topics because nobody really right now knows how to evaluate models very well. Benchmarks come out, they get gamed. They, they, everybody, every new model release comes with, here's all the benchmarks on which we are doing better than our competitors, right? For 15 minutes and then the next one comes across. There are lots of tools right now, which model evaluation frameworks and tools, which evaluate LLMs and embedding models by themselves, right? Like by their own how good they are at on a certain task, like coding. Hmm, or, kind of standalone uh, basis, right? Standalone thing, right? Like, you know, here's an LLM. I come out with a new LLM and I propose it. I get to benchmark it on all these different axes and publish that report, which is fantastic. But in the real world, when you go to deploy, LLMs are never used standalone. They're used as part of soft complex pipelines. They form an important part of those pipelines, but they are in actuality, they are a very small part of that pipeline. There are multiple models interacting in any given real world Gen AI deployment. And then from embedding models, guard models, main synthesizing LLMs. So they actually form 
this composite AI system. And it's very important to evaluate these models as part of that system, not, mm-hmm. not just in standalone. I mean, they're both important, but I think the second part has been missing from the community for a while. I'm glad it won't be missing now. Final question for you, Day, is where can people go to learn more or actually start using Sifter? The source of truth is our GitHub repository. It's completely open, MIT licensed, and we would love for the community to come in and kick the tires, try out things, suggest what they want, open PRs. We have a very nice uh, blog post, uh, which is short and to the point. And then the th- third is if, if people want to know all the nitty gritty details, we have a 43 plus page technical report, which is also accepted at AutoML coming up in September in New York. But the paper is fully open, published on archive. And we would, these are all the places where you can learn about Sifter. Great. Okay. Thank you so much for your time here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.